everyone, and welcome to episode 21 of the Heart Space podcast with myself, Jasmine, and my wonderful co host here, Alicia. And as you can see, we have a special returning guest back today, Wade. Hi, and welcome, brother. Nice kia ora, to have kia ora. you back. How are you? Good. And how have you been doing? Yeah, good, good, good. Same old, same old, you know. Getting through, getting through the the I, I guess the the waves of rubbish that we've got coming our way at the moment. Yeah, and there's so much of it coming coming from all angles at the moment. Um, so today's topic is a very special topic that Alicia's been wanting to discuss here on the Heart Space <laughs> podcast for a while. So I'm just going to open it up to you, sis. Cool. Thanks, Jazz. Hi, Wade. Thank you so much for coming back. <laughs> yeah, not not a problem. <laughs> Thank you for having me again. It's um, it's a pleasure. Um, so yeah, so this topic has been really important for me. Um, it's something that I've been learning over the last two years. It's something that I finally understand. However, the way I can't articulate it so clearly for people to understand for themselves. And so that is why I'm so glad that you were here. And um, as we were discussing off camera, we'll probably do this in a, in a part, part episode sort of on the same topic. Um, but yeah, so here I am. I'm wanting to ask you, where, where does this all begin in regards to um, the living being <laughs> and that fictitious entity of the corporation? Well, yeah, well, that's a long one. Um, and it, it's, it's a journey that, that a lot of people really do need to take uh, in order to find the true history of New Zealand. And um, just speaking quickly before we, we dive into that, and that is of the history of New Zealand, is, is that one thing um, people, you know, always, always tend to say to me is that what does history matter right now? Um, the fact of the matter is, is we're in a, a cycle, a, a perpetual cycle, that, that the, the history is actually repeating itself at the moment. Mm. Um, unless we don't learn from history, uh, we're going to be, in, we're going to inherently uh, learn from the mistakes um, of our past. So um, that is why history is important. I know that our history in, in this world at the moment is a little bit um, played with and, and it's written by the victors, not not down the middle, but um, you can use your discernment to get through that. First things first is where we start off is in 1835. Um, well, it actually started off um, slightly before 1835, it was about 1833, um, where there was a treaty, uh, a treaty signed between uh, the Northern Tribes of New Zealand, which was which inherently became the United Tribes of New Zealand, uh, which is under Hiwaka Putanga. Um, that was signed in 1835 uh, with King William IV. Uh, 28th of October, 1835 is when the official date um, was, um, when the official date really of, of the signing of, of Hiwaka Putanga. Mm -hmm. um, now that treaty there, um, a quick rundown of that treaty is, it's only a four article treaty, so there's not much to it. Um, as much it was for the Northern tribes of New Zealand, uh, it was also in the in article number four was left open uh, for the other tribes of New Zealand to come up and also sign uh, that document as well. But under the 21 gun salute of, of King William IV of 1835, um, it made New Zealand a republic, um, which a republic under the under the guise of, of the Privy Council um, of, of England. So yeah. England um, or Britain became a big brother pretty much figure to, yeah. to New Zealand with, the doc, with this document. Um, pretty much a little bit of a help and, and protection for them. But at being a republic, um, it gave us... Um, our own rights and our um, our own inherent rights to create our own laws to govern our own lands, um, you know, to yeah, to everything to do with our land was still ours, um, except that we we um, sort of just had a big brother figure um, with England. So that's the start of that's the start of where um, our sort of history starts with with the British colony, anyway. Mm. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good, and I love it. That because see, that's what I mean. Like you know the dates. You can like. Yes. Whereas yep. I'm like, oh, let me just check. I'm my a sucker own. for dates. I I'm <laughs> terrible. <laughs> so numbers yeah, are my thing. You can art, articulate yeah. that for our audience. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, so then moving forward, so how do we how did we go from that to we've got the Treaty of Waitangi? Yep. Um, and so I was just wondering if, if you could like explain how we moved forward, moved through from the Declaration of Independence to yep. being under the Crown. Yep. All right. So <laughs> the Crown, so everyone first and foremost, people most people have to most people pin the crown to the, the royal family. Uh, when the royal family actually has nothing to do with the crown. Um, the royal family is, as such as already sovereign beings of London City. Um, London City is a country within its own country. Um, London itself is an English country, but London City is a country inside its own country. Um, same as, uh, where else? Same as uh, the Vatican's the same. Um, same as Washington, D.C. Washington, they are the yeah, just fine. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're the District of Columbia, so Washington, D.C. Um, so what actually, um, so, so once you realise that, the, um, that the, the Crown isn't part of the actual royals, the Crown is the corporate entity to London City, which is controlled by Westminster Parliament um, in, in London City there. So what happened is when King William the um, when King William the Fourth passed away, um, I believe I don't actually have the date of that correctly, but it was somewhere between uh, thirty seven and thirty eight, so eighteen thirty seven and eighteen thirty eight. So only a few years after um, Hiwaka Putanga was was originally signed. Now the reason I'll, I'll just go to the reason why he actually um, why he actually signed this and. Um, the document was was to keep the snakes out. So um, the reason why um, he is to keep the snakes out, and the snakes aren't the the normal living snakes in the grass and in the trees. They're the snakes, the politicians, the mm -hmm. the corporate people. He um, gave us a republic to keep the corporations out. Um, but then in 1830, yeah, 37, 38, uh, I think it was Queen Elizabeth, sorry, off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure. Uh, she was then, um, when King William IV uh, passed away, Victoria? King... Uh, it Victoria? could have been Victoria, sorry, it could be Victoria. Um, I just yeah. don't have that on me at the moment. It's Victoria or all, Elizabeth. I've got all the documents, like... <laughs> 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 I, I'm, I'm, 90, I'm actually, you're right, I'm pretty sure, 99% right, it was Queen Victoria, <laughs> sorry. Um, so she took over at the, at the ripe age of 19, um, and what, had, what happened was she had uh, a group of men, she, worked, she actually wasn't in line for the throne either, she was about three or four steps down, uh, but she was 19, she was controllable. Um, they could put people around her in order to, um, you know, get her to do um, some of the dirty work um, as such. Um, but these men um, put together what they called the New Zealand Company. Uh, the New Zealand Company is still, um, still alive and well today. Yeah. Um, and what they did, and that's part of Westminster Parliament. So it's under the Crown, which is under the Commonwealth, which is run by Westminster Parliament, which is overseen by the sovereign being, which is the Queen. So she oversees the whole lot, but in in, all, in reality, uh, Westminster Parliament control. Um, yeah, the the documentation and and the signings and all that, and and people see that the the Treaty of Waitangi um, has never ever been signed by the Queen. Um, or a royal as such. Now, when we look at, sorry, just so I know it's a long-winded, but when we look between the difference of Hiwaka Putanga and the Treaty of Waitangi, the Treaty of Waitangi was signed between uh, the Maldives of New Zealand or, or the, the sovereign beings of New Zealand and the New Zealand company. They were tricked into, into signing that document with the New Zealand Corporation, um, which which then came into full fruition in 1841. So full time was was the New Zealand Company, um, but the Hiwaka Putanga uh, was signed by a king, um, yeah. and the difference between also the difference between a king and a queen uh, in that realm in the empire realm and the kingdom and kingdom sort of realm. Unfortunately, the king's signature has more. Uh, pull or more push compared to a queen signature mm. um, and the reasons behind that is because a king goes to war and the queen doesn't right so because i'm just going back to when i was trying to learn all this because it, it, yep. it can be a bit like this so has that got to do with the king's speech and the queen's bench and all that kind of stuff because i i've seen the documentation where the queen didn't sign outside the borders i don't know if i'm like on the same 
little here, yep. but like King's Bench, Queen's Bench, there's something to do with that. Yeah, two, two different types because there's two different um, levels of authority in that. Okay. Yeah, so so you have the the king's authority, which is he has more, and, and he had more authority back in the day because he went to war, uh, and the queen stayed home. So, you know, he you know because he went to war, he had the bigger balls. He, he you know he could call out anyone he wanted to, or, or have more authority. So, um, on that side of things, um, but with the treaty, um, the Treaty of Waitangi, obviously, um, we. If, if you look at the Maori version uh, of the document and the English version, they're two pretty much different different versions. Um, and then because we are a republic, we are a living um, a living entity, which was New Tereni. Um, and and I'll just quickly throw this in here too, just for everyone out there too. Aotearoa, the name Aotearoa was never ever used in either Hiwaka Putanga or the Treaty of Waitangi. So that mm. name has never ever been mentioned in either of those documents it null and voids either of those documents if there is a name change so is that uh, that's that was going to actually be my next question so if there is a name change it it null and voids voids those documents and that's kind of what they're wanting yep because it's a corporation so so they need to the only way that the the treaty and hiwaka putanga can be transferred from because there's even more of a story behind there including the, the CPTPP, the TPPA that Jacinda signed, right. things like that. It, it's, it's a big deal. But um, in order for them to change the name, we're also changing from the Privy Council to the Supreme Court as well. Mm-hmm. So we're going from being under England's guard to being under America's guard. Yep. Now, our treaties mm-hmm. are not signed with America. They're signed with England. Mm-hmm. So that null and voids our contracts. But what happens is if there is a written agreement between... Um, the living beings in New Zealand, so uh, the founding people of, who signed those documents and the American, they can swap over, but there's no agreement there. Um, so literally we changed the name. Um, it's never, you know, that, that name's got nothing in those treaties whatsoever. So it's got no uh, corporate law. It's got no business law. It's got no um, no standing behind it um, with those contracts. So is that why... Because you can see it everywhere now, like Aotearoa has been used a lot. And would you say that's been patterned by the corporation? It's a- brainwashed. People yeah. are just brainwashed. Yeah. And you look at the media every night now, it's Aotearoa New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. like yeah. I'm, and, and and don't get me wrong, I'm not, you know, I'm not against the word Aotearoa at all, but I'm, yeah. against, I'm, I'm against the, I'm against the agenda behind yeah. it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, Aotearoa, at, at, to start off with, Aotearoa was only used to explain the North Island. I didn't even know that. Mm. Yeah, so, you know, if how wh- what happened to South Island? You know, like, yeah. what happened to Stewart Island? You know, like, what are they still going to be called, New Zealand? Mm. <laughs> it's, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's just a mess. It'll make a mess, and people don't realise the mess that it'll make. And it'll and take the everything agenda. from them. Yep. behind what yep. they're pushing and they're yep. always they're, they're always pushing some hidden agenda in these cases too and they use these like what's happening now as a manipulation tool to to sway people yeah yep yep you're 100 correct that's it, all it is it's their agenda is set they tried to do it with the flag with john key changing True, the flag yeah, they, they already tried right. to do that um, and, and what this inherently creates as well in the long run is, is now Hiwaka Putanga is a living document. It's not a dead document. It's not a corporate document. It's what you call a living document because uh, it is signed as sovereign, you know, sovereign beings or as free men, free women to, or a republic um, compared to, say, like the Treaty of Waitangi, which is a corporate document. It's a, it's a dead document. Mm. Um, and the thing most people, yeah, and, and the living don't speak to the dead, so I don't know why we're yeah. listening to it. But this it, is a topic, you know. and see, this is where I want to move to next is I want, I want to get into this stuff because this is the stuff that blew my mind like that whole dead entity, the living don't speak to the dead, you yep. know. Um, it blew my mind, and that's the stuff that's really empowered me because I'm like, yep. I've, I've always been sovereign, I don't need documents to prove that I'm a <laughs> sovereign being. I, I, I am flesh and blood. I am the living woman. Um, <clears throat> and so with the corporation, um, knowing that it's illegitimately running on this whenua, 
yep. um, learning that it's under Law of the Sea. Law, yeah. So this is where this gets complicated because then this goes down to the birth certs and everything like that. So this is where I'm wanting to, I guess, this is why I want to divide these um, episodes up with you so that we can make sure that it, like, our viewers are not getting fed too much and it's done in a structured way. Yep. So would you say that's where we'll be heading next in what we're discussing now? Would, would we go? Where do you yeah, nearly there. Yeah, we're yeah. nearly there. Yeah, we're yeah. nearly there. There's cool. there's cool. a there's a bit there, um, and obviously, you know, I'll, I'll still speak on on the treaty a little bit just before we go into the birth certificate. No, that's cool. that's, I just wanted to see where we're. But at. yeah, absolutely, because the birth the birth certificate is obviously the you, you know like just just quickly before we go go back a little bit. I know we're bouncing a little bit here, but um, the birth certificate is 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 your opening to the system. It's, it's your it's your gateway um, mm -hmm. straight in. So there's other ways that that. And there's reasons how that gateway opens, which we'll get to. So, um, yeah, it, it, there's <laughs> it's it's yeah. from birth, you know. It's just from birth yeah. that, that they've yeah. just screwed you. Um, but in regards to that last bit of the treaty, just what I wanted to say too is is between the Maori version and the Maori version, which didn't cede sovereignty to um, England um, or Britain. Um, the difference between the Māori and the English version is under law of the land and under the common law, which is uh, not corporate law, which you were talking about, um, not maritime law, which you were talking about before, uh, which is facetian law or, or law of the ocean. Um, um, law of the land or common law, which is where we live, where we reside, we are here, we are living, breathing entities on the land. Um, the document that is the legal binding document of this land is the land that is in the um, is in the original language of the country that the document was written in. So the real version of our treaty is not the English version that we get taught about. That mm. is a, that was supposed to be a copy for them uh, to ship back to England, so it, they just have their own copy. Uh, the original treaty should have been the Maori treaty the whole way through, uh, which mm. in the Maori treaty sovereignty was never never ceded. Um, and the other thing that I just want to say just quickly before we, we carry no, forward yeah. is, is um, the separation. You know, um, we just have to realize now that um, we need to stop thinking of it as Māori and Pākehā when, um, mm -hmm. you know, like myself, yes. I'm, a, I'm a half caste. You know, I've got both, in, both um, sides, in, in, you know, inside me. There is one or two full-blooded Māori um, in New Zealand at the moment, like now. Um, there's got to be a way that we cut the separation between the people and we actually look at the fact that it's the corporation that's done yeah. this to us. Not the, 100%. it's not the white person. It's not the fucking, it's not the Maldives that done them to themselves. Um, it's, it's the corporation mm. um, that has done it to, to New Zealand. Um, so that's what people just have to understand. It's, it's, it's not, it's not the white man. Um, not every white man wanted to, come over here and, and rule the land, they yeah. thought that they had a free place to come to, you know, like it, <laughs> whether, whether, whether people want to see it that way or not, it's, it's, it's hard, but yeah. Yeah. No. And I I'm just glad you to touched touch on, on that. that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, I'm glad you did touch on that because that is something that I'm seeing big time. Um, and our, I just want to say that the media had done a fantabulous yeah. job and keeping that division between Māori and Pākehā. And yeah. I know um, that um, on a previous episode where I was speaking, um, when we had our other guest on, Auntie Hey Hey, and I was, she backed me up a lot, like at the beginning of the year, because I was just trying to speak about this stuff. But because I'm a white woman, I was not allowed to. And I got slammed all over TikTok by um, a lot of Māori. And it was because I was speaking things, I guess, that they we're ready to hear it's a harsh topic it's very it's very touchy because at the end of the day like all i want is for us to all be able to come together yeah because you're right the mm. corporation is the problem it's no. always been a problem it's yep it, it, it is hard it, it's hard for anyone to hear really to to know that your whole world is upside down and and yeah. you know this is and and this goes back to our original conversation uh, you know, breaking the matrix is is this is that matrix system that is that is over the top and that that's that you know mirroring our system. It uses everything that we we use, um, but you know mirrors it in, in an order for the corporate for the corporate um, 
the corporate factors um, in this world. It's always so, benefit too. Yeah. You know, they've just made us dead entities pretty much. And, and you know, you just have to look at the word corporation to start off with, and, and that's Corp, the biggest yeah. sign, corpse. What's yeah. a corpse? It's a dead person. Um, first things first is all, all your documentation that you have, all your legal documentation is all spout in all capital letters. The only place that you find capital letters is in a cemetery, a dead entity, mm. you know, um, and this is what your birth certificate inherently brings in um, with a hell of a lot of help. And, and again, I'm going to bring it up, but with a hell of a lot of help was from religion. Yes. Yeah. Because because the laws that we are apparently under are, are God's laws or, or anything like that. And the way they get you in this is, is through the birth certificate, through being a bastard child and, and being a stillborn child is, is by putting your, your mother's maiden name on the birth certificate, which is a religious move. You know, a, a bastard child is a religious child, you know, a, a person born out of wedlock. Wedlock's a religious you know, a, a religious ploy. And and it's opened the door for these people to take our entities or, or steal our souls from the moment we're born. And there's so much trickery involved, you know. And if you're, I think when I first woke up and started to learn about common law and sovereignty um, and the hidden agenda behind things, how they've used the this dead language to manipulate the system to manipulate us with, without us even knowing because then we go through the school systems and we get taught you know their, their language and how they speak and the terminology so that's a whole other a, other topic is spell casting and you know yeah. the wording and the dead language too like because there's there's so many layers to this one topic that we yeah. dive into I love it, I love it. <laughs> this is a, this is a, I love it. And then see, like, I can talk to my friends about this and they, they're mind blown, but to try and actually get it accurate, like that accuracy, sort of like, you know, how you're able to read off dates. And that's why I wanted to bring you on um, so that you are able to help explain this because I'm passionate about this. I want people to know where their power truly lies. And that's within themselves. They're already sovereign. They're already yeah. free yep. beings. And when you yep. learn the difference, you become so empowered. Yeah, hundred percent right. That, that you're hundred percent right. We're we're living, breathing people. Um, it's it's it's, and that's why I said like the illusion, the matrix, the the simulation. It's it's the falsehood of a system um, that's run off paperwork. Mm -hmm. It's that's it. it. It's it's a paperwork world that we're in, um, and you can. You know, everyone's like, oh, well, you know, you can. You, we are sovereign living beings uh, at the end of the day. Yes, we are. Um, but also at the same time, if you if you don't claim um, your sovereign being back or your straw man back, which is your dead entity, uh, they inherently can still make money off that every mm. single day um, out there, which is from your birth certificates. And this would relate to like things like fines, showing up in court, like all that kind of stuff, right? Yep, 100%. So er everything to do with the system is all based on your straw man, um, which comes from, yeah, just like I said there, which comes from when you're very, pretty much when you're when you're born or you're birthed or you're manifested, um, that, is, that is when you, you sort of, um, I wouldn't say, well, you lose your, well, they, they take ownership of your soul. Um, yeah. is the easiest way to put it. And it's why they also, um, you would, uh, for everyone out there that's had children and things like that, um, they prick the heels of the babies and, and take a bit of the blood. Do. Yeah, taking your soul. Mm. You're taking a copy of your soul, your DNA. That's all they need is a drop of blood. Yeah. And, and, they've, and they've captured it. But um, I guess the easiest way to way to explain this is is you just have to look at um a shipping system <laughs> i know it sounds weird but um yeah. you know a, a corporate shipping system um is the same way sort of our birthing system works as well because uh, in reality um if you're a living or a free man or woman um you're actually endowed you're not birthed um you should be endowed not birthed uh, birthing is when um a ship pulls into dock um to birth 
And then when when the ship is birthed, they have a have a whole lot of products on on that ship. Now those products don't exist on on dry land right now because they've come from somewhere else. So what they inherently need is a letter of manifestation, um, and and what that is 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 a document of manif- manifestation is just saying, hey, look, all the stuff that was on the ship, you know, just say I've got twenty cars on the ship, I've got twenty cars here. They've just manifested themselves out of thin air on the ocean while they're traveling over here. We want to put them onto dry land. Here's an inventory for you, right? So they put out an inventory of, of the 20 cars. There's five red ones, whatever, blah, blah, blah. There's your birth of birthing or your, sorry, your uh, certificate of manifestation for those 20 cars. Now, each individual car from there has a birth certificate, meaning that it's come on from the ocean onto dry land. So it's it's birthing, it's birth onto dry land. Mm. Now, when you're a human being, your vessel or your car or your uh, temple, your vessel really, is carried in your mother's waters. Mm-hmm. You come from the ocean. You're, you're from your mother's waters. When your mother's waters break, you are then being given birth in, in the language that they use. You're birthing. Right, so then you get a uh, then you get your first when when you are born or you're endowed, <laughs> uh, you get a um, a living document first, a living birth certificate. Now, what happens with that is is that's the reason why your your mum's maiden name goes on that, um, and your father's you know obviously your father's name and your mo- mother's maiden name, so that they can class them as a bastard child, even if your parents are married. They'll claim them as a bastard child. And then when you go and register your birth certificate, so then you've got your, your living document, your, your midwife goes in and registers the document. Um, they kill you as such. You become a stillborn child. Um, and then they reinvent you pretty much with uh, the National Register's birth certificate. And when that happens, um, anything that you register to the government, the government owns. Um, so they now own you or they own your dead entity. Yeah. You have to claim that back. You can claim it back with ease before you are seven years old. So yeah. funny that. Yeah. Because Do you after know why s- they put that t- time frame? Yep. So because after seven years, your claim to have been lost at sea, you are no longer returning. Oh, wow. You won't be returning that you, you know, we can't find you. So you're gone. We're taking everything. Yeah. Yep. Like little saying. bastards. <laughs> it's like my mind's like blowing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. See, this is the stuff that I know, but I just can't articulate it. Yeah. And the way you just explained mind- it was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, well, then it goes into parents, you know, parents, look at the word parents, you're a pair, you're renting, you're renting yeah. your child, you're a pair yeah. of the oh. child, you're renting them. And that's when you're the wording comes government. into play. They've manipulated everything with the wording too. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it makes you angry too. Yep. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does. This is why I want people to watch this because <laughs> when you learn this, you're like, what the <laughs> yeah, well, that's what you know. Like, and it I, makes I, sense. I know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I know you've been a, you know, you've been one to to advocate for my stuff. But this is why I do the classes I do. This is what I teach. You know, like I'm trying to, I'm trying to educate people because, in all, in all honesty, um, these people want freedom. You want free? Well, you're going to have to do the work in order to mm. learn what is freedom and and what's not. What's the false light and what's the true light? And it starts with learning the true history like you're teaching yep. right now. Yep. And it's about, you know, and, 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 and one of the things too is mm-hmm. we're now at this point where we've gone from, and, and I'm just going to be honest here, is, is we've gone from this middle road to being one way or the other. And, and yeah. mm-hmm. there's nothing in the middle because the truth is actually in the middle. It, it's not on the right. It's not on the left. It's It's not – Anywhere here, the truth is in the middle somewhere. Yeah, 100%. Um, and once you start learning that and you learn the system that's around you, you actually know, like, the easiest way to defeat a system or defeat anything is to know the thing that you're up against. Yeah. Um, well, and un- until you understand that, like, until you take the time to understand that, then we're stuck in, in, in a cycle that just goes around and around and around. Yeah, I'm done with the cycle. 
I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to be like really high out on the other on the other side, and now I'm I'm, I'm actually starting to come to the middle. Um, yep. I, I've just noticed that just with just with myself. I've just yeah, it's just funny how that happens, but it's good. It's good, and I want and I want other people to start realizing like you don't need to be so hearty on one side or so hearty on the other. We, you, there's always truth mixed within the lies on both yeah, sides. And that's why we need to, yeah. And I guess that's where like discernment and all that comes through. Like you And keeping an open mind too, because you could be set in something yourself, like it's seeing yeah. one thing a particular way, but there could be holes within your belief system too that needs to be, you know, just keep yourself in check too yeah. it's as simple as that and keep questioning things and don't get complacent um, I'm probably um, <laughs> oh, now I was just about to say I'm probably about to say a, a controversial thing that probably most people probably will go oh here we go but the thing is 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 at the end of the day the system that we're in um people go around saying you know like we're talking bad about these politicians and we know what they're doing you know we know what mm. they're playing at we know that they're puppets in the day you can't hate any of them because if this shit didn't happen, if they didn't do what they're doing, we wouldn't be in the position that we're in right now. We wouldn't be waking up to the world that's around us. You know, we yeah. wouldn't be we wouldn't be wanting to find the truth. We'd yeah. be stuck in us. We'd be stuck in our cycles of going around and and worrying about. You know, yeah, we got the nicest car, we got nice TV, we got the nice house, we've got a nice life. You know, what more do you want? Well. Yeah when these politicians start pushing this and they started doing this, what do we do? We finally started to evolve as, hum as humans. We finally started to look into the, look into the truth of the world rather than just be get, just get given what we're given. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I can't, I can't yeah. hate it. Like I hate what they're doing. Like don't, yeah. don't get me wrong. I hate what they're doing. I hate the people that they are. But I don't hate the fact that it happened because it caused it a mass awakening. Yes, you know all this fuckery caused a lot of people to go within and and question the system and and just just the um the pandemic alone, you know, and how that was handled and a lot of the censorship behind the information and the misinformation coming from yeah. the media too. They they really played a hand in getting people off their seats and diving deep and doing some research for themselves so yep. yeah if you look at it in that way you kind of take your power back too because yeah. it's just a, a higher perspective yeah it, it literally is because you know even even the system that we're in even even this corporate system yes it's it's been in in rotation at least for you know fuck three four hundred five hundred years now but without that three or 400 years, do, would humanity evolve, you know, under the pressures? It's like, how is a diamond made put under pressure? Yeah. You know, what's going to evolve humanity? Back them into the corner until there's nothing else they can do. They've got to stand up and fight. They've got to stand up for what they believe in. They've got to stand up for, the, for who they are. Um, and until, you know, until you get pushed into that corner, you ain't going to be pushed into, no. in, into that, you know, into that mode. So, at the same time, you hate what's going on. You hate what's happening. It had to happen. It did. Yeah. And it yeah. happened in divine timing too, like just the year. And I think we, as a as humanity, we were leading and we still are kind of going down this, this road into what I would say, like the way I see the world at the moment is there's like two parallel universes playing out. You've got people that are awake and aware, and then you've got people that are still dead asleep in the system. And um, it's the ones that who, who are awake like us and a lot of other people who are trying to make a difference, who are trying to get this information out there and educate people. We're trying to penetrate something so dense. Do you know what I mean? Because it's, it's people are so complacent. They're so comfortable within this matrix system that it's really is hard to penetrate. And even though there are people waving their hands in the air and, and wanting things to change, they're not willing to do that work and go within yeah. and learn the true it's history. The yeah. It's that work. And I've, and I noticed this and a lot of people might not like me saying this, but I see a lot of people that are awake to what's going on. Um, and there's, but they're still, they're still in that fear state of mind. Um, they're not, they, they're not evolving 
is who they are. They are constantly focused on the shit storm that's going on, that they are staying in that low vibration. Um, they're not working on themselves because, uh, yeah, I know it sounds mean, <laughs> but that's what I'm seeing. It's the and addicted I, to fear, addicted yeah. to fear and, mm. and drama. That so you can still be awake. You can be awake but still be addicted to that. Whereas I, I've shifted, for me personally, I've shifted from that. Yeah. 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 Yep. This, has a, this has been a great episode. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's no, a, a good place to leave it too in this part yeah. because um, there's so much layers um, into this one particular topic. So we will um, leave it there for now. But yeah, that was a great introduction because it, it, I, I myself didn't know the history. So thank you for sharing that. No, today. You're welcome. I just no, want to welcome. say to anyone that is watching and is wanting to learn more, um, Wade, you've got classes, don't you? Yes. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Do yep. you want to just stand on that a little bit? <laughs> yeah. So um, I've actually, I'm, I'm up to, what I'm up to now, class of uh, class five, I think it is this week, five it is this week. Um, so I, it's $10 a class um, on a Thursday evening. Um, I go from 7.30 till about 9.30 at night. It's about about an hour 45 to two hours worth of worth of information um you know where i've i've expanded over the whole system so um the first three episodes are all on the you know birth certificates the um two life uh two lives of um sorry uh two forms of creation or the two lives of creation uh which is the the matrix system and the and the living being system um i've even dove into um the way secret societies move in and out of these systems in order to keep us awesome. indoctrinated in these systems yeah. um so yeah I, I do classes every every thursday from 7 30 till, till 9 30 um and you get the replay and everything too so um yeah it's, it's pretty awesome. much pretty much a gist <laughs> Cool. It's worth taking advantage of those classes too, especially if you want to, you know, learn more in depth about these topics too, because they go so deep. Yeah. And yeah. like, like just for me, like I, and this time I won't fall asleep before class, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm planning to be there on Thursday, uh, this Thursday. And like, even though this is information, like I've been learning about for the last two and a half years, it's funny because like, there's things that do slip. And it's nice to have that refresher because yeah. it's just like anything, repeat, 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 and you it will start being getting ingrained into your brain. Like you yep. can't forget this shit. So, yeah, so I'll definitely be there on Thursday. I just want to thank no. you so much for coming back on, and I can't wait to do part two of this topic. Yeah, we <laughs> love. I love connecting with you. It's, it's such a vibe. It's so yeah, great you're more than welcome. Here. Thank you very much. Thank you guys all for having me too. You know, I appreciate popping back through. Um, and it's just, you know, it, again, I'll, I'll enjoy and, and um, enjoy um, episode number two when we get onto this one too, uh, because there's a we can start scratching many surfaces on the way through this this journey. So um, yeah, it's awesome. it's a fun, it's a fun one as well. Most people, yeah. If, if I just want to say one thing, just before we fucking um, end on up here, is that people will have to realize that once you actually start finding this stuff, it actually becomes exciting. It's a fun journey because you realize um, that there's a whole nother world out there pretty much. Mm. Um, and it's something that that's for all of us. Nice. That's awesome. Thank you again. And thank you to everyone who tuned into this episode. Um, make sure you have subscribed to our, our channel and hit that like button below. And if you know anyone that would be interested in hearing this content, make sure you share the link with them too. But thank you so much. And I hope you have a great day and much love to all. Kakite. <laughs>